On our way to the land, we stopped by this beautiful wildflower sanctuary. And for those of you who don't know, this is an area that is carved out and marked as protected due to its beautiful wildflower displays during rainy seasons. These places are critical for biodiversity of animals and other plants. We saw so many beautiful plants that I've personally never seen before. And I was excited because I saw the potential of our land being filled with these. Wildflowers are the painters of the landscape. They are what really differentiate a region from the next. And as you can see, my son and I were excited to find these flowers and the life that was on them. Finding them on this land that may seem pretty barren motivated me to work the land even more because when done right, it can look like a masterpiece. More hope was brought to me after I discovered it was next to a bunch of dry lake beds, showing me that this place can be a gold mine. Now in the last episode, I showed you guys that we created this parking lot and this road. So one of my goals this time around was to focus more on the cosmetic side. I wanted to smooth things out to make it ready for visitors to be hosted in the summer. We only have a couple of more months before our first in-person workshop and I am getting so excited about it. This parking lot is gonna be able to hold about eight to 10 vehicles and I made room in case we needed expansion. I'm seeing people's interest increased in recreating a connection with the land, rebuilding it because we know that the destruction that we have caused it. So it makes me happy that something I'm so passionate about and have been for some time, I can now do with other people. We have a bunch of plans for so many workshops coming up in the future, but I wanna know what are some of the things that you guys would like to do on this land. For example, a couple of things that we're gonna be doing is building homes for the native animals, small and big, whether it be bird houses, lizard houses, turtle houses, or eventually coyote dens. And I know you guys probably have some interesting ideas, so let me know in the comments below. The turtle houses, however, are a really big priority for us. At the time of recording this, California officially announced that the desert tortoise that is native to around these areas is going endangered, so we must act fast. I wanted to show you guys today a slow drip irrigation method that is perfect for those who are struggling with hot climates or who don't have money for a big proper irrigation system. If done well, it'll keep your plants alive even in the hotter climates. The whole trick of this is to poke a hole in the bottle, whether that be a plastic water bottle, a milk jug, whatever you have laying at your house. Then you create another hole on the side of it for some type of airflow. What's cool about this is that you can control how much water comes out simply by adjusting the hole. I felt like it was coming out a little too fast, so I adjusted it to close it up a little bit and it ended up turning out perfect. With this, now we have a true slow drip irrigation where I could simply just leave it at the base of the plants and it'll drip out over the course of the next 10, 20, 30 minutes or even a couple of hours depending on how slow your drip is. I wanna show you what it looks like as I give water to the sage plant. This slow drip is very important because it allows the water to actually sink deep within the soil. A lot of people just pour a bunch of water on their soil and the water disperses and doesn't really get too deep. It more so has a water runoff, which your plants hate. It is very simple. Just place it right next to the base of the plant and let gravity work its magic. Here is a close up for you guys to see. As you can see, it's just a drop, a drop, a drop at a time. And when I say you can use anything you find laying around, I had a spare cup 
from when I went to a juice bar and decided to poke a hole at the bottom. And look at that, you got your nice slow drip irrigation. Make a bunch of them at one time, lay it at the base of all your plants and just walk away. Now I hope you guys know by now that the main goal is to bring the biodiversity. So it was really cool when I saw this guy laying on the ground. It is a bone, it's a carcass. I personally believe it's from one of the jackrabbits in the area, but however the case, it means that there are animals coming in and around this place, which means I must be doing something right. Oh, and not to mention the water irrigation is an amazing activity for kids. Just be comfortable when they have the knife and trust that they know what they're doing. Here are more examples of the biodiversity. Here are some crickets that absolutely love this water because they won't get drowned out while sitting at the base of the trees. I'm pretty sure this guy was talking to me and saying thank you or maybe he was wanting me to go away. Regardless, it's really cool to see so much life on the land. One of my main priorities on the land was to bring some type of compost pile to it. This is going to bring in the smaller animals, which again, I explained how it brings in the bigger animals. It also provides nutrients to the soil and provides plant matter, which if you have watched our previous videos, you know that it's a pretty big deal on this land and how much it's lacking different plant material, lacking the boldness in that soil, making it very sandy. So every time I go, I bring a big bag of fruits and veggies that I'm going to throw away and eventually there'll be workshops on that. I want to show you guys the update on this cactus. It is the very first plant that I put in the ground and it's doing beautiful. It's not native exactly to this area, it's native more south in Mexico, but it is loving the place. And speaking of cactuses, did you know that this cactus next to me, the prickly pear cactus or the optunia, I believe is what it's called, is one of the favorite plants of the desert tortoise. So I'm making it a mission to plant as many of these as I possibly can. Also, because they look cute, they grow in very little water, and I personally love the fruits myself. My plan is to line up a bunch of cactuses along our driveway and eventually on the outskirts or the border of our land with the mix of desert grape in there too so we can be eating something throughout the year. I want all of the plants that we put on the land to not just be functional for the environment and for the native plants but I want to show you guys that we can grow food for ourselves in the mix of growing food and shelter for the animals as well. It's a part of the bigger plan to show people, hey, we can coexist with nature. We don't have to destroy them and build on top of it. So if you guys would like to be in a workshop where we go around planting these cactuses, let me know in the comments below and make sure you are staying tuned to the newsletter that we have on our website, Life the Plant Way, where we will be having updates and the announcements to all of these workshops and as well as when new videos come out. And this is going to wrap up today's vlog. These are all the things that we are getting into over at the land. Thank you so much for your support, for your interest. And I hope to see you guys out at our workshops when we start hosting them this summer. If you like the video, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and the bell notification for when the next episode comes out.